So what happens is in 2019, a comedian called Volodymyr Zelensky starts promising people. Now he is born in Kriviri, which is somewhere here. It's a Russian majority area and he's a Russian Jew. He's not a Ukrainian Jew. He's a Russian Jew. Okay, so he comes from this area in the Russian, his, his, the language he speaks at home that he's grown up speaking has been Russian. He promises, but he's mm. a Jew. Now he promises people, think of him as Arvind Kejriwal, that I will unite all of you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And for the first time in Ukraine's electoral history, see how Ukraine votes. Oh my God. Super Asaf. Yeah. Yeah. Holy moly. Hmm. Okay. Now, so, what only is that Zelensky area promised? that Khrushchev gave away that held? No, no, no. Khrushchev gave away this area. That is the uh, Crimean yeah. Peninsula. But that yeah, is that under Russian held, occupation. Nah, Remember, in, no, no, that... No, no, no. In 2014, this was uh, annexed by Russia, no? Just like Donetsk and Lugansk. Sorry, 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 sorry. So these two areas. Correct. So yeah, these, these didn't take part in the election. But this is all Russian majority areas that voted for Vladimir Zelensky because they said, Tu to Russian hai, tu Yahudi hai, par tu Rusi hai. And he also mm -hmm. said, you know, I'm going to give autonomy. He was like your classic Lenin. What Levin, Lenin said, oh, yeah. you know, we need to look at, uh, you know, uh, back to here. See, everything is, <coughs> history doesn't repeat itself, it rhymes. So when mm -hmm. Lenin says, I'm planning to Ukrainian nationalism and giving you this, that's kind of what Zelensky does in reverse. He's like, Deko, hamare Rusi pe bahut hua hai. So I am going to uh, uh, ratify the Minsk Accords, which give complete autonomy to these provinces, these eastern mm -hmm. provinces, or these oppressed provinces, the oppressed industrial provinces. I am going to put them on equal footing here. And meanwhile, like Kejriwal saying different things to different people, he is blowing a completely different trumpet here. The only people holding out against him are the Catholics because mm. they hate anything Russian and anything Jewish. If you're a Russian and if you're a Jew, you're the worst kind of enemy that they can get. They would preferably see so, you in uh, a gas chamber. Are they the, the Ukrainian ethno-nationalists? Uh, yes, the, these are the most rabid. Now, remember this map here where I showed you. Remember this, the presidential election of 2010. See how this had become the ultra-right Ukrainian nationalist. Well, this had become the ultra-right Russian nationalist. Mm -hmm. Now, superimpose this ultra-nationalist Ukrainian area onto this. And remember the Catholic voting. The Catholics always vote very differently. Petro Poroshenko is the guy that won the presidential election after Euromaidan. So he was essentially a Western puppet. The Poles, Latvians, Lithuanians, all the Catholics loved him and the Protestants loved him, which is why he got these votes. Mm -hmm. <coughs> here he spoke, here Zelensky spoke about anti-corruption. Here he spoke about minority rights, which is why for the first time in Ukraine's electoral history, the entire country voted so overwhelmingly for him. Across mm -hmm. regions. Now, here's the, where the fun starts. When he comes to power, he starts playing the same game that led to Euromaidan in the first place. Now, remember, we were discussing Euromaidan that this mm -hmm. guy wanted to, sorry, this guy wanted to sign a deal with here, but Russia yeah. offered him a deal. When he decided to sign with here, they removed him from power. Zelensky mm -hmm. is a crook. He is a product of oligarchs. So he is like Arvind Kejriwal. He can neither deliver here nor can he deliver here. Mm -hmm. So, he starts playing these games where Mirko NATO membership chahiye tumhare saath. Mirko trade deal chahiye tumhare saath. And the worst thing is he throws his previous electorate under the truck saying now that you have a Russian Jewish president mm -hmm. you don't need to worry and I'm going to take away all your autonomy. So the reverse of the Minsk process is where the power of parliament 
the Verkhovna Rada is all taken away mm -hmm. and centralized into his hands. So now understand what Putin is thinking. This was in 1991 for the 2001 census. Now, you have already done it from here and just done it from here and done it Zelensky is going to do a lot worse. Now, this is where you understand the denazification comes in because in Putin's mind, what has happened here and what Zelensky is doing, plus the Azov Battalion, the Azov Brigade and the Aidar Brigade and C-14 and all those neo-Nazi groups, they are all mm. part of the same nexus. Mm. So this is why it had become Bardash Ke Bahar for Putin at this point. Hmm. Now, I still don't think he should have done what he did because there were still several cards to be played. The problem was that the parliament, his primary tool for preventing Ukrainian EU membership and Ukrainian NATO membership was parliament. The more and more, it now turns out that Zelensky turned, uh, signed his own death warrant when he decided to go back on the Minsk agreement giving these places autonomy and decide to centralize powers onto himself from the Verkhovna Rada. Hmm. Yeah, so Abhi, just to summarize, Meriko Thoda hmm. Log Taki Log, because there is this is a lot of uh, you know information for people. So what I'm trying to understand and put it in perspective is there is a ethno-linguistic diversity inside these societies. Ethno-linguistic is the right word. It is ethno-linguistic. It is not just linguistic, which is quite clear. Correct. So okay. because no. of this ethno-linguistic diversity, there are certain urban centers and prosperous centers or semi-urban and urban vis-a-vis, -vis, let's say, rural underdeveloped centers. Now, one, one side of Ukrainian society thinks x and one side thinks y one wants to join europe one wants to stay loyal to russia and i kind of feel like a situation i'm not saying it is an exact parallel i'm just using this small micro analogy where kai bar uh, sri lanka ki ek government china pasand karti hai ek government india pasand karti hai kind exactly. of a scenario aur ek isko girata hai ek isko girata hai usme mar rahe ukraine ke log hain aur jo politicians hote hain they are just puppets of one regime or the other exactly I forgot. The last straw for Putin was ballistic missile defense. Hmm. Stability had been maintained. Remember, all the other countries have under 1,000 warheads. Russia and America were the only two countries that had six, seven, eight, uh, at some point, even up to 20,000 warheads. So global strategic stability was on the basis of the anti-ballistic missile agreement, where they decided, you should be able to hit us, we should be able to hit you, we will not develop counters to your missiles. So that we mutually deter each other. Otherwise, we're mm -hmm. going on playing this catch up, catch up, catch up. Like, you know, uh, uh, COVID wasn't deadly. Then it became a deadly strain. You have to find a uh, vaccine for it, spending billions of dollars. Then uh, COVID develops into the Delta variant, then Omicron variant. And then you have to come up with new booster shots, this, that. So they didn't want that. So they said, let's all save a lot of money, make it stable and keep this ballistic missile out now. When Iran and North Korea start testing ballistic missiles, the Americans say, boss, now we need ballistic missile defense. Mm. Okay. The Russians say, okay, bhai. Main pura, puri se tum logo ko hu. we will jointly develop the system and deploy it. Because remember, Russia is closest to North Korea and Russia is closest to Iran. If an Iranian missile comes to Europe or if a North Korean missile comes to North America, it will have mm -hmm. to fly over Russian territory. So you develop it and station it on our territory so that we can shoot it down even before it gets airborne. The Americans say no. Now, where do they decide to station the missiles when it is developed? Poland and Japan. Oh, so now, they want to uh, keep it so that even Russia is in check, I guess. Exactly. What is Shano? <laughs> and that is and that is when Putin has decided from Clinton not wanting me in NATO to your double standards and everything to all the colored revolutions even three months back they tried the colored revolution in Kazakhstan remember hmm. the riots, they, they tried to replace the Kazakh government 
they essentially put a Nazi government in place that was killing that has killed thirteen to fourteen thousand Russian speakers mm. in the last eight years in Ukraine. Uh, they have done it in Georgia. Okay, they did it to the USSR. So he's like, "Bhai, you are all revolution. You are doing ballistic missile shield. You send these complete jackasses who uh, uh, destroy our economy, and you are giving me all this nonsense about rules-based order and shit like that. You tell me." At what point is he not going to crack? Hmm. 